Hi, I'm Doug Carroll from InsidersGuideToFinance.com, and I'm here to try to help clear up one of the most confusing concepts in the fixed income business, yield to maturity. Yield to maturity is one of the most widely cited measures of value in the fixed income business, and unfortunately it's one of the most misunderstood because it is so widely misdefined. Now, probably more often than not, yield to maturity is thought of as rate of return to maturity. And that's not a, an unsurprising confusion because one of the most common meanings associated with the word yield is rate of return. So what could be the more natural conclusion than believing that yield to maturity must mean rate of return to maturity? Unfortunately, that's nowhere near the case, at least not for most bonds most of the time. Because think about it. What's going to determine your rate of return to maturity on a coupon bond? Well, of course, it's all the cash flows collected over the time to maturity. But to make a specific example, if one was talking about the 10-year T-note, unless you know the rate of return at which the first 19 coupons are reinvested, how could you possibly know your rate of return to maturity? But let's zoom in a little bit more closely to pick up some of the detail, because if one had a clearer understanding of the method of the computation of either of those measures, it would be very hard to confuse the two. First off, the yield to maturity formula. Well, the yield to maturity formula comes out of the same formula that's used to calculate a bond's price. Well, gee, if both price and yield to maturity are computed by the same formula, that ought to be a pretty clear indication that price and yield must be two different ways of referencing the same idea, two sides of the same coin, if you will, that are simply different ways of expressing value. Because what does that price-yield formula say? Well, it says the price is the present value of the future cash flows, the future interest and principal payments, where the yield is the I in the denominator. Well, that I is a periodic rate, and you have to annualize it. So let's get a little bit more explicit. Let's replace the generic price yield formula with the same formula computing the yield on a 10-year bond with a 4.5% coupon trading at 95% of par. So on the left-hand side, you have the price of $950. On the numerators on the right-hand side of the formula, you see the 2250 semi-annual coupons. And yield to maturity would be the single value of I that, when used to discount the, the future cash flows, the future interest and principal payments, it would be the discount rate that would cause the present value of the future cash flows to equal the price. And again, if it's a semi-annual paid bond, you've computed a semi-annual rate, so you'd have to double it to get the annual rate. What about rate of return? Well, rate of return Today, to a bond's maturity is a very problematic concept for a number of reasons. Because you'll note the rate of return formula is started out by taking an ending value. Ending value, that's all the cash flows over the life of the bond, plus the reinvestment income and all the cash flows received prior to maturity. Well, unless one has a crystal ball, those rates of returns are impossible to forecast with any degree of certainty. Now, the ending value is divided by a beginning value. That's easy enough as long as you know the bond's price. That's the beginning value because that's what you pay today. Ending value divided by beginning value gives you one plus your total rate of return to maturity. So if you raise that to the one over n power, that gives you one plus the annual return. Back out one, you've got your annual rate of return. But who in their right mind could believe that that i times two is gonna equal that rate of return? your chances of winning Powerball are greater. So yes, all too often introductory level books on fixed income define yield to maturity as the rate of return to an investor who buys a bond that holds it to maturity. And for what it's worth, it's not even true of zero coupon bonds, but now you're getting into issues of compounding frequency versus annual rates of return. But clearly in a coupon bond, it would be nigh unto impossible to be able to know in advance your rate of return to maturity. So yes, yield to maturity is commonly defined as a rate of return, and very often yield to maturity is used as a proxy for future returns, but one has to be very careful when interpreting yield to maturity in exactly that fashion. The only real meaning of yield to maturity 
is, it is the interest rate that expresses the value of the security today. In other words, the price by another name or price presented from a different perspective. I hope you enjoyed this video. You can go to our YouTube channel or Facebook page to see other videos on a range of investment related topics. Or you can go to the website, insidersguidetofinance.com. At our website, in addition to the free video shorts, there are a series of modestly priced in-depth training videos with running times of approximately one hour each that go into a number of subjects in greater detail. The website and Facebook page also contain information about open enrollment programs I will be presenting over the next few months and my recently released book, The Insider's Guide to Fixed Income Securities and Markets.